I started because I saw the chasm between small businesses and large businesses when in their method of growing. If you start a business, you have to go out on a limb and, and cut it off because it's too tough. Most people don't have the intestinal fortitude to, just to, to make it. You have to ask, you have to keep trying, never give up on your dreams, and follow through. When somebody really catches on, you know, it's a great feeling for both them and me. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's a good high, you know, it's when, when you're able to help somebody. I talked to a lot of high school and college students today about entrepreneurship, and I truly believe that in order to be successful, you have to be willing to take risks. Value matters. Uh, do it right. The heart never lies. Go home at night knowing you did the right job, the right thing. We got along so well. Scott would say, I can't figure out whether to marry you or hire you. Running a small business is like solving the Rubik's Cube. It's a lot easier if someone shows you how to navigate the twists and turns. Good evening, everyone. I'm Rick Edlin. Tonight's seven business champions reveal their formulas for success and how the SBA helps entrepreneurs solve their puzzling challenges. But first, a special message from the District Director of the U.S. Small Business Administration, Dennis Melton, and the Chairman of the Small Business Week Committee, Don Barnes. It's uh, my pleasure to once again welcome everyone to Small Business Week 2010 for Eastern Missouri. Uh, this is our great event of the year. Uh, we come together with all of the other uh, entrepreneurs, uh, entrepreneur peers, to recognize those that achieve the most. And uh, we also want to recognize that our sponsors and a lot of federal government entities also participate in this event because it is the resiliency of the small business that are actually bringing us out of a very difficult two-year Great Recession. Uh, so tonight is our opportunity to recognize those that won our awards, uh, our winners and our champions, and to them we wish the best. Small Business Week of Eastern Missouri, Inc. is a nonprofit that was established over two decades ago to assist the SBA in the planning and execution of Small Business Week. It consists of 14 committees and about 70 volunteers that come together for a 10-month period to help with everything from the nominations process all the way to planning this awards dinner and everything in between. Uh, we are the only district in the nation that actually has an organization like this in place and we're the only district in the nation that still celebrates a full week of events during Small Business Week. Uh, but you know, we wouldn't have anything to celebrate if it wasn't for the rich, diverse small business and entrepreneur community that we have here. Uh, we really rely very heavily upon them for their support for, for nominations, for volunteers and for sponsorship. I think that the success of this celebration is a direct reflection of the richness and the depth and the diversity of that small business and entrepreneur community and we really do appreciate all the support they give us throughout the year. Tonight you're going to hear stories of courage, struggle, perseverance and hard-won victories. Stories that personify the American dream. We hope this video will be an inspiration to everyone brave enough to strike it on their own to build a small business. Peace by peace. I'm Jennifer Quinn Williams, owner of St. Louis Closet Company, and we organize people's lives by creating a place for everything. She's a successful entrepreneur known for giving back to the community. But in 1991, 25-year-old Jennifer Quinn was a struggling graduate student at St. Louis University. To make ends meet, she took a job that would change her life. I got a part-time job working for another closet company, fell in love with what I was doing, and two weeks later, dropped out of graduate school, quit my job. With the help of SCORE, Quinn wrote a business plan for her own closet company that snagged an SBA loan. It was $10,000 shy of what she needed, but the fearless Quinn decided to go for it. In order to be successful, you have to be willing to take risks. And luckily for me, um, I had a great product, great service, surrounded myself with amazing employees, and I was successful, so the risk paid off. The newly dubbed St. Louis Closet Company took in more than $200,000 the first year. Then business really took off. The company designs, manufactures, and installs custom-made closets for homes and offices. William says paying attention to detail helped spark her success. From our building, to our vehicles, to my employees, to the installers. When we show up at a customer's house, my installers arrive with 
vacuums and drop cloths and they offer to take their shoes off. So every detail about my business is important to me. Four years ago, Williams purchased, renovated, and moved the company into the former Cavalier Packaging Factory. The old loading docks now house a second business, a wine store called St. Louis Cellars. My husband and I love wine. It was a hobby of ours, and we had this great space after we bought the building. This is the space they actually used to pull the 18-wheelers into. Williams has this advice for beginning entrepreneurs. Whatever it is you set out to do, you have to love it. Um, you will do your business 24 hours a day, seven days a week. When you're not at work, you're thinking about it. She is honored to receive the Entrepreneurial Success Award. When I go up and receive this award this evening, I will be thinking about the tens of thousands of people we've organized through the years, my amazing staff, the team of employees, and my entrepreneurial family, my grandparents, my parents, and my husband who have helped me all the way through. I'm Louise Wiederman and I help small businesses become successful. Louise Wiederman shows business owners how to use computer software and technology to grow their businesses. I help people maximize what they have, not necessarily go out and spend millions of dollars on software and technology, but just make sure that what you do have, that you're using it well and that you're using it effectively. Anyone can claim to have great customer service, but Wiederman has proof. Her company, Project Technology Consulting, was ranked among the top 25 in St. Louis by Small Business Monthly magazine. I really try to make sure that I understand what a customer is asking for at the beginning and that not only do I try to meet their expectations but exceed their expectations. When we're finished, I want them to say, boy, I'm glad I picked Louise to, to help me do this. Wiederman says her success as a teacher often depends on her ability to communicate without speaking geek. When somebody really catches on, you know, it's a great feeling for both them and me. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's a good high, you know, it's when, when you're able to help somebody and they finally figured it out or they get that aha moment. Wiederman credits the SBA for much of her success. She started her business with knowledge gained from SCORE counselors. Now she is a SCORE counselor. It's a resource. I mean, just finding out what all the things the SBA, SBA offers is uh, something that every business owner should do. Her advice to entrepreneurs is to develop a technology toolbox to maximize your success. Everybody should have a website. Everybody should have a good database of customers and prospects, past customers, whoever you talk to that's in your network. Um, you should have some good email marketing. Whoever's in your company, everybody should have a smartphone and it should synchronize back to whatever database you use. Wiederman says being named the Women in Business Champion is a special honor. Educating, helping other people. That's, that's, what it's, that's what the award was about, and, and I think that's why it's really nice for me, because it's kind of a compliment and, and that recognition of, of a lot of volunteer and, and helping other people. I'd like to thank everyone on the SBA committee and the SBA. Uh, Dennis, Patty, you guys are doing a great job. I appreciate the award. Um, I understand the recognition that goes with it, and again, thank you very much. I'm Nikki Reynolds and I'm the owner and director of Into the Rainbow Child Development Center and I'm helping shape the future for the next generation. <gasps> Are you giving them silly hats? 30-year-old Nikki Reynolds is living a lifelong dream. As a child I always wanted to have my own child care center. I always babysat and children were always drawn to me and I was always drawn to them. They provide more than daycare at the end of the rainbow. We're preparing them for the world. We teach them life skills, how to deal with their emotions, how to communicate with other people. We have a curriculum that we follow. We do a sensory, we do art activities, we do manipulative, we do writing. It began as a part-time job. 
Reynolds was majoring in early childhood development at Columbia College when she started working here. When she graduated, her offer to buy the center was rejected. The owner wanted to sell, but not just yet. That left Nikki Reynolds facing the most important business decision of her life. Do I go somewhere else where I can make more money since I just graduated college? Or do I stay here? Nikki, a St. Louis native, chose to stay in Columbia to learn the business and connect with Rainbow's parents and staff. Three years later, her tenacity paid off. The owner was ready to sell. Well, I wouldn't be here without the SBA. They allowed us to have these loans to make Into the Rainbow a better center. We were able to expand our facility, redo our playground and make it twice the size add several safety features for the children. More expansion plans are underway, all because of some special skills Reynolds didn't learn in college. The advice that I would give to others who are entrepreneurs, my first and foremost would be, if you don't ask, the answer is no. You have to ask, you have to keep trying, never give up on your dreams, and follow through. Reynolds always saw herself as an educator. She was shocked to learn she's the Young Entrepreneur of the Year. She calls it a special honor she didn't earn alone. I'd like to thank, first of all, the Lord for everything that he's blessed my life with. I'd like to thank my family, especially my husband. I wouldn't be here without him. I'd like to thank my friends who've always supported me. I'd like to thank my families here at End of the Rainbow, the parents and the children. I'd like to thank the assistant director, Ginger Otto. I sure wouldn't be here without her. She's gave me some great advice over the years and kept me going strong when I'm having a down moment. She keeps the place running just as I would if I was not here. And I'd like to thank the SBA committee and the Bank of Missouri. I wouldn't be here without all of those people who've supported me over the years. This is my wife, Judy Mosby. I'm Scott Mosby. Together, we're Mosby Building Arts, and we do more than enhancing people's homes. We enhance the way they live. If you had to describe Mosby Building Arts with one word, it would be family. Receiving the Family Business of the Year Award is special. It's like an affirmation of the several generations of Mosby and Mosby Building Arts and how we've become uh, a family beyond bloodlines, the people that I work with, the clients that we serve. Scott's father, Sam, started this home remodeling business in 1947. In an industry that has the second highest number of complaints per customer, Samuel Mosby made customer service his top priority. We clean up, we show up on time, we're polite, we don't park on the azaleas, we love the dog, we start the roast, we pick the kids up at the corner sometimes for school. I've driven people, I picked a kid up from the airport because the homeowner couldn't get there in time. But we're still doing the same thing, Sam did that. After graduating from college, Scott purchased the company from his father. That's when he met someone else who loved home remodeling as much as he did. And she had an incredible smile. I have grown up with my father who built all of our homes and our additions, so I was right there with him all the time and helped him. Scott and I just started talking and clicked and um, we enjoyed construction, so it was a lot of conversation about work. Only one thing could keep them apart. By day, Judy worked for a different construction company. Scott would say, I can't figure out whether to marry you or hire you. When they married, Judy became Scott's partner in life and in business. We spent 12 years in our home working out of our basement with our kids growing up during that time. And it was uh, kept growing to where we had seven employees in our little house and had to go somewhere. The SBA came to the rescue. I'm in a building right now that is afforded because we were able to get an SBA loan. I couldn't afford to pay for this building without the education that comes from the SBA and Small Business Week, all these seminars. Every Saturday, Scott hosts the Home Improvement Show on KMOX, answering questions from listeners throughout the Midwest. I remember a time in my life, a sadness, that all that my dad taught me, I was using so little of it. So KMOX, I call it University of Sam Mosby. 
That's all I am. That's what I am. And I get to touch a lot of people every Saturday. And it's the way my dad continues to live on. When he and Judy receive their award tonight, Sam will be there with them. As I go up to receive the award tonight, I will be, and I often describe myself as this, I represent the family. I am the sum of my parts, and hopefully I am delivering more than I was taught. I am Joanne Venderlo. My company is Lux Funding, Inc. I help companies grow by solving their cash flow problems. Lux Funding advances money to companies that can't wait until the end of the job to get paid. Most of the companies are small. They don't have the collateral or the relationships with bankers that help larger established firms get loans. This is what my business does. It gives them the working capital that they need to either to, con to complete their contract on time and to also get new contracts. Nowadays, companies have slow paying receivables and this is the perfect solution for that problem. Venverlo still remembers what it was like when she was struggling to get started. It was kind of difficult because, as you know, there were not many ladies in the field, but um, and not too many people knew of the term factoring or accounts receivable funding. I didn't know of the advantages that uh, SCORE or SBA uh, gave to small businesses like they do today. And it was, it was kind of tough. I really didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> Venverlo says patience and perseverance are the keys to her success. I joined some organizations such as NABO, such as Missouri Venture, and not necessarily just to promote my company, but I found out that there were many opportunities to volunteer to help the organizations help other small businesses. In Joanne's office, this photo of her father seems to be watching over her. He was a businessman in the sheet metal industry. I loved him and he left us many, many years ago by having a heart attack and uh, I remember him almost every day by the sayings that he would say, what he would do, how he would react to different situations. It helps me to be persistent in what I have to do and plug on. As for the recession, Venverlo says tighter bank credit has helped Flex Funding prosper. Many people that were bankable before are not bankable now and I, I try to help them the best I can get, get getting the money that they need. Normally, it's Joanne who works quietly behind the scenes to get others nominated for Small Business Week awards. She was stunned to learn she'd been nominated and selected as the Financial Services Champion of the Year. I just want to thank all the wonderful people that have nominated me and given me this opportunity to share my, my thoughts. It's an honor to be recognized for my contribution to the growth of small businesses. I'm Jerry Jost of Jost Chemical Company, and we manufacture ingredients that improve the quality of the products that you use every day. He heads a multi-million dollar company that does business around the world, but 25 years ago, Jerry Jost was working for someone else. The idea of starting my business uh, actually came from the plant manager at my previous job. Uh, one day he pulled me off to the side and he said, uh, Jerry, you're fired. In the beginning, it wasn't unusual to see the company president driving a forklift. The first four years were the toughest. Jost did everything he could to keep the business afloat. You know, for most of those years, we wondered if we could even meet the rent payment. Anyone else might have called it quits, but Joe says he just couldn't give up. I just visualized seeing my kids out on the street, and I just kept going, even though it was really rough. Jerry's daughter and son are grown now. Both are chemists and are among the 130 self-motivated employees that give Joe's Chemical Company its edge. Now, we don't do a lot of management here. We, we, have, we hire really good people that can manage themselves 
and quite frankly, people that require a lot of supervision really don't do well here. Joe's Chemical manufactures high purity chemical compounds used in everyday items from toothpaste to multivitamins. The man who was once fired is proud he's never had to lay anyone off, not even during the recent recession. Over the last two years, Joe's has grown uh, 40%. You know, we continue to uh, work our business, uh, we continue to develop new products. Joe's is thrilled to be a part of Small Business Week. Small business owners take huge financial risks. They work very long hours under very stressful conditions. You know, and most of the job creation uh, occurs in small business. And a lot of our best technology originates in small business. And I really appreciate the uh, SBA and the business community um, giving this week of appreciation for small business. He says the award he receives tonight is not his alone. On behalf of Joe's Chemical Company, I'd like to thank the SBA for giving us this uh, Entrepreneur of the Year Award. I, I don't really view this as a personal award. You know, I stood on the shoulders of uh, many great employees that we've had over the past 25 years.